All right, guys, I'm going to take two on this because I did a great video on this, and when I hit the pause button, it didn't pause, and then everything that was paused recorded, and everything that I wanted recorded was paused. So let's try it again. Okay. <sighs> Where we leave off? Hmm. Okay. Dart 007, still on the bench. Okay, here we've got 202 back cut polish short side radius. I opened the pinch a bit because I had a feeling the, the pinch was giving me a problem, right? So we go down, let's see, we're doing 208 at 0.3, which is pretty damn good. And we max out at like 262 and change, which is less than we were doing before. So what changed? It's a good question. So I took some more air speeds, right? Pinch is fast. Back of the bowl is good. See how even they are? But the inside edge, the cylinder, center of cylinder, short side radius is really, really fast, right? Okay, so when I look at the pinch, I took some air speeds right along this pinch here, and it was extremely fast, over 400. So I said, you know what? What do I do when the air speeds are high? Well, I polish it. What happened when I polished it? Literally, almost no change at all, all the way down, which I thought was interesting, right? Okay. So then I said, okay, we're going to put a little texture back in it. But I didn't want to bring it back out to the shed, so what I did is I took my little pencil grinder with a little stone, and I gave it a little quick, a quick light stoning. I didn't even take it off the bench, right? Made sure no dust went into the bench, and then I redid it. And take a look at this, right? Up, up, right? 116 at 0.15 is good, right? 211 and change. At 300 is excellent, right? 250 at 40, 263 at 5. That's still down a few CFM from our best. We did 269, I think was our best we ever got. And then she's maxed out, right? So I started thinking, I said, well, is it possible the pinch is giving me a little trouble? So let's, let's measure it out. What do we got? Okay, 1.028 wide, not very wide. There's not a lot of metal on this. Uh, I mean, I can take more out of the center, but it's kind of maxed out. I wish there was more metal there. Okay, and it's 1.803 tall. If you want to do the corner radius, if you really want to be exact, right, you take a half inch square, 0.5.5, right? That's 0.25 area. And you take the area of the circle, which is area equals pi r squared. So the area of the circle is 0.196. You subtract 0.196 from 0.25. It gives you 0.054 inches. That's the little bit of area in these corners, right? So you need to subtract that from this, right? You take your height, your width, you multiply them, you subtract that little bit of area from the corners. We come up with one point. 799 square inches, about 1.8, right? Then if you want to find out how much air you can get through it, multiply it by 146 CFM per square inch. We come up 262.7 CFM. Pretty interesting, right guys? You think the pinch might be part of the issue. I don't know. I've been thinking about it. And then I'm like, hmm. If I use it on the old work truck, I've been saving this intake for a while here. There's a Wien Speed, uh, Speed Warrior. I think Wien is owned by Holly at this point. Holly doesn't send me any money, but uh, I really like this intake. And I'd like to take some time and go over why I like this so much better than Performer RPM. If I can remember everything I did on the first video, we'll, we'll get to that. So what I did is I took this and I bolted it on the 007. 
and I put my 770 carb on it and I got these flows here. Now what I thought was interesting is I took these yesterday and it is a few degrees cooler today so we actually get a boost a few CFM boost with the intake manifold on which I thought was unusual but my the bench was hot when I did this when my bench is hot I lose some CFM so that's where I'm gonna say this these couple CFM come from temperature difference right but check it out 115 uh, 0.15 still flowing almost 116 right excellent flow start getting around 300 all right we go from 211 to 192 still not bad on a dual plane intake manifold really right 208 218 at 500 with 233.5 now I measured it at 533 because the old work truck's got a 533 inch lift right it's a 500 lift with a 1.6 rocker so it comes out 0.533 lift hydraulic roller short hydraulic roller they get 236 CFM now the old work trucks a 98 K3500 weighs 5800 pounds 33 inch tires 373 gears turbo 400 tranny with a stock truck converter 555 engine Okay, right now it's got a set of 083 worked up cylinder heads on it. I'm thinking of changing them for the old 007s. And it's probably going to get fed by that intake. And it's going to have a 900 CFM uh, Holly fuel injection on it. Actually, I'm having issues with the fuel injection. I may do a different fuel injection. Uh, that fuel injection is from 95. That is the Holly 4DI that's laptop programmable and since I bought it in 95 it's a DOS program I can't even get any computers to link up to it to even change the program which wasn't a problem until I made a mistake it ran the truck battery completely dead and it lost the EEPROM programming somehow don't ask me how that really shouldn't happen but it went down to like a base program and it barely runs right now so I gotta work on that I actually went to buy a new Holly fuel injection and there was none available. I've been running Holly fuel injections since the 80s. The old Chevelle, that's actually got one of the very first Holly four barrel projections on it. One of the first ever manufactured. Uh, Holly could pay me a lot of money to get that back if they wanted. Why not? Okay, where was I? Okay, now, do I really want to? do any more work and get this higher than it is judging that it's a work truck it's only 355 cubes it only goes i mean in reality with the, the real short roller cam it it doesn't it doesn't want to go to you 6000 rpm is where the tranny shifts and it's done it's done at 6000 okay if i put it in first and wind it out she'll shift at 6000 and she'll chirp the 33s but it's not happy at 6,000 because the valve action is too fast. The valve, the, the valve, let's see, the cam is an old comp cams, an old Magnum. Magnum 260HR, so it's 206 duration intake and exhaust, 500 lift, 110 lobe cent separation. And since I got a 1.6 rocker on it, it brings it up to a 5.33. And you could probably add maybe two degrees duration onto that. So it's real short. So it actually works really well in a, in a truck because it's all torque. Right? Fast open and closing valves. Very low overlap. Okay. So. Yeah, I wanted to show you this little tool here. Right? One of my flow, flow ball wands with a piece of kite string on it. It's not going to be easy for me to do this because I really need three hands to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this pull into the port. And I need to use an external light source because the first time I filmed it, you really couldn't see anything with the light from the phone. So let's see if we can get this done. Hold on. 
All right, guys, I'm not going to talk during this. This is going to be a little difficult for me to do, so bear with me. I'm going to try to get you some decent shots of the string in the port. I want you guys to take a look at what the string is doing, where it wants the air to go. That's showing you. All right. The high-speed air is going to grab the string because it's got the lowest pressure. So it's going to show you the paths that the, the air is flowing. That was extremely frustrating, and I'm sure it was frustrating for you guys as well. Uh, I just don't, I don't have enough hands. I don't have enough hands to do it. But this is basically what I wanted to show you guys, okay? The, the string follows along this wall pretty well, actually. I was surprised, right? And it dumps off just before the end of this short side radius here. And it does the same thing on the long wall. And let's say that C is going to be the center of the short side radius. Now, I have really high airspeed right in here. I have 446 feet per second. So what that's telling me is it needs a little more area here, right, to spread out that airspeed a little bit more. And I'm thinking of doing that, and then I'm like, you know, I don't know, am I really going to gain anything? This is this has got a pretty fat curve right in here. I mean, well, I should I shouldn't show it with the manifold. Show it without the manifold here. Take compare these numbers right in this area right here to a good high flowing head, and uh, it's very competitive, right? I doubt, I doubt the, the port is over 190 cc's right now. I mean, I don't know if I can see anything in this, inside this port at this point. Um, actually, you know what's interesting? Oh, the battery. The battery's almost dead. That's beautiful. That's just what you want. Because it wasn't a big enough pain in the ass doing this twice. The battery's got to die on you. Okay. We're plugged in, which is going to limit limit us even more. Battery too low. Flash unavailable. Gotta love it. 